Eric, you had a comment during the break, and I wanted you to be able to get that in. Our politically correct society has caused us really to bend over backwards not to offend a religion whose printed book, the Quran, tells them not to assimilate. Mm-hmm. And yet we're trusting somehow that we're going to convince them by our goodness to assimilate to be a Quranic Muslim. You can't assimilate. And that, that to me, has been one of the craziest things along the way where you have judges trying to, yeah. you know, reform terrorists and all those kind of things. It's This is not part of the thinking of Islam, I'm afraid to say. So pleased to have in studio Melanie Phillips, again, author of the books Londonistan and The World Turned Upside Down. I believe you have another one called Guardian Angel. You'd have to find them on Amazon.com. Don't call here. We don't have them. Amazon.com. Learn more at MelaniePhillips.com. I gave a tease a few minutes ago, Melanie, about wanting to talk to you about Donald Trump, about Israel. We have all new Israel-U.S. relations. We have a president, in spite of some of his shortcomings, who has a heart for Israel, and I think you would agree to that. Very much so. I think he has a genuine affection for Israel, a genuine desire to protect it. He is certainly a welcome change from what's been the case in the last eight years under President Obama, who I believe had an animosity, uh, deep animosity against Israel and endangered it. And we see that President Trump has already done some things which help Israel. He has indicated to Iran that he is not happy with the Iran deal, which I think endangers the entire world. Quite how he will deal with this problem of the terrible Iran deal remains to be seen, but at least he has laid it down that he is unhappy with that state of affairs and he wishes to rein back the increasing power of Iran. He has also put a wonderful person into the United Nations, Ambassador Nikki Haley, who for the first time in my lifetime is somebody who is standing up in the United Nations and telling them that their irrational and really quite deranged animosity towards the state of Israel is completely unacceptable. Again, we have to see the United States putting its money where its mouth is. I would like to see it withdrawing money from the United Nations as a result of its ridiculous and dangerous attitude towards Israel. But that's a tremendous advance. Now, in terms of Israel and the Palestinians, there's a lot of confusion and concern among certain people in Israel itself and among people who support Israel that President Trump has been too friendly to the Palestinians, given that the Palestinians, in my view and in the view of many, have a non-negotiable agenda, one of basically wishing to destroy the state of Israel as a Jewish homeland. Mm. So why is President Trump making nice with them? Well, we don't yet know. Uh, It's possible that he is going down the same peace process rabbit hole that has entrapped successive um, administrations. But it's also possible that he's giving the Palestinians rope with which to hang their own cause. He invited Mahmoud Abbas to the White House. It was all very friendly and very loving and uh, very nice, but he set the Palestinians a high bar for them, a very high bar for them, which is basically they've got to stop teaching their children to hate and to murder Jews. <laughs> they've got to stop paying the terrorists' families uh, salaries for blowing up and murdering Jews. And this is a high bar for them because it basically he's saying, we expect you to be a civilized people. We expect you to actually want to live alongside the state of Israel, not destroy it. Can you show us that mm-hmm. that is the case? And so far, the Palestinians have said, you must be kidding. You mad? We're not going to do this. So now the question will be, given that Mr. Trump, the President Trump, by his own lights, wishes to make, wishes to preside over a deal, he wishes to bring about the deal of deals and bring about peace between Israel and the Arabs. Okay, is he going to understand that on this particular issue, there can be no deal. You can make no deal Absolutely. with the unspeakable agenda. You cannot negotiate with the non-negotiable. If you try and make a deal with an agenda which is unconscionable, then you end up being the handmaid to evil. And I don't think he's going to do that. So the question is, what's he going to do when the, when it becomes quite clear the Palestinians are not going to meet his requirements? What's he going to do? I think I know what he should do. I don't know what he's going to do. Tell us what he should do. What he should do is say, you know what? I'm the deal maker. And as the deal maker, I know what makes a deal. And I have said in the art of the deal that sometimes a deal is not possible. And I'm telling you, as the deal maker in chief of the world, this is an issue where a deal isn't possible for this reason, that you cannot make a deal with people whose basic premise, whose basic proposition is one that no civilized person should accept at all. And that is the destruction of the state of Israel. And so therefore, given that you, the Palestinians, 
are still set on this appalling aim, there will be no deal from me, no negotiation at all. You will get nothing from America. You will get no money. You will get no diplomatic recognition. We will no longer regard you as statesmen in waiting. You are not. You are terrorist supporters and people who wish to exterminate another people. As such, you'll be treated as political and diplomatic pariahs. When and if you change that agenda, we're open for discussion, for a deal, for a negotiation. But insofar as you have an agenda which no civilized person can tolerate, then you are out of here. That's what he should be saying. He should be changing the entire narrative. Until now, well-meaning administrations have said, this is a fight over land, over the division of land between two peoples with a claim to the same piece of land. Mm -hmm. Not true. Not true. For a hundred years, this has been a fight which has been caused by the desire of the Arab side to exterminate the Jewish homeland. And furthermore, what they're always trying to do is to rob the Jewish people of its own history, Mm -hmm. to pretend that the Jewish people, who are the only people for whom the land of Israel was ever their national kingdom in history, that they are pretending that that isn't the case and that the Palestinians were there first. Historical illiteracy of a high order. Unfortunately, many in the West who are ignorant of Judaism, of the Bible, they're ignorant of history, they're ignorant of the Middle East. They have bought into this in large measure and they believe it. So it needs the President of the United States to reshape the entire narrative of the Middle East, to start educating the world in what is actually going on in the Middle East and to start standing up for truth, for history and for doing the right thing, for justice, against the lies and the falsehoods and the extermination agenda that has held sway Mm -hmm. for all these decades. Yes.